sight to see, fine on the time. The sight of that money and beauty likewise made Roger's heart greedy and filled his eyes. Now the jump money and daughter is here, tis I will not have her, tis I will not have her without that grey mare. Well, the money and supper were taken from sight, and likewise young Cathy, his own heart's delight. Roger was taken and shown out the door, and ordered not for to come there any more. Twas then he did tear at his own yellow hair, said, I wish I had never, I wish I had never spoke of that grey mare. Well, it wasn't six months, and they were over and past, and Roger the Miller he met with his lass. I think I do know you, young madam, said he. I am the same way with you, sir, said she. A man of your features with fine yellow hair, oh, he once came a courting, he once came a courting, my father's grey mare. Oh, it was not a courting that grey mare I came, but you, my own jewel, and my <coughs> Cathy by name. I thought that your father would never dispute to give me the grey mare with you to boot, and not to risk with such a dutiful son. Oh, tis now I am sorry, it's now I am sorry for what I have done. For your sorrow, young Roger, I have a little regard, for there's plenty of men in this town to be had. If you'd forgot the grey mare, you'd be married, you see. But now you have neither the grey mare nor me. The price of that grey mare was never so great. Oh, fare you well, Roger. Oh, fare you well, Roger. You're a sorrowful steed. Now Roger's away to his desolate home, and he sighs as he sits there and sucks all alone. Kathy, she sings. She is happy and gay. She is wed to the young miller who works the long day. Lads, when you're courting, be always aware to court with the young maid, to court with the young maid, and not the grey mare. I'd often lie and pray at night when the winter winds would call, and I'd have for mine a youth so fine to roll me from the wall. Well, an old man he came curtainly, he'd been three score and more. With long white hairy whiskers, and he had golden stores. But there wasn't a trace within his face of a youthful sign at all. And I was told he was too old to roll me from the wall. Oh, when my parents heard the news, sure they got very bold, and said I'd have to marry him if he was twice as old. To satisfy my parents, I went without a bow. Ah, oh, but sorely he rejected. During the cat smoking days during the Second World War. So one evening, and when I was a young fella about fourteen. I decided uh, there was television programs on about the Second World War. What did you do? What did your dad do on June the 6th of 1944? So I'd watched this program quite intently. And I was coming up to go to bed, and I said to my father, I says, Dad, do you remember the Second World War? Yes, he says. I says, would you remember June the 6th, 1944? He says, that was a great day. He says, the boys were mounting the pizzas in Normandy. So I thought to myself, I think I'd asked a hundred thousand dollar question, Dad. What were you doing on June the 6th of 1944? <coughs> well, he says, I do remember that night. He says, I was smuggling 350 head of cattle across it to Holland. 
in front of the barracks, saying my prayers that none of the 300 cattle would issue a ball. That's how he spent the Second World War smuggling. So, 